Hey, hello and welcome to this new updated tutorial by Promotion. As many of you have commented on my last head replacement tutorial, the workflow isn't working anymore. And this is because Mocha is now a plugin in After Effects and not a standalone version anymore. But today I'm going to show you how you can reach the exact same result within After Effects with a new, improved workflow. And as a special treat, I'm giving away a 15% discount on any Boris Effect product. So you just have to type in Flowmotion15 as a coupon code on the link in the description below. But enough of me talking, let's get this thing going. So what I have here in After Effects are two movie clips. One is the original background file and the other one is a green screen clip that I recorded. One thing I have to mention is that the original footage is 1920 by 1080, so full HD, and the green screen I have recorded in 4K. So now I have a two-step workflow for this head replacement. At first, I have to take care that I have a nice head that I can use. In this case, it's my head, so I need to stabilize it and, of course, get rid of the green screen. And as a second step, I have to track my face onto the face of Jean-Claude Van Damme. So let's start with the first task. Of course I have filmed myself in front of a green screen so that I can get rid of the background and I have tried to stand as still as possible but you see I still moved a little bit. And as I want to stick my head onto the neck of Jean-Claude Van Damme it needs to be pretty stable around here so where my neck would then sit on his neck. So let's start with stabilizing this shot with Mocha. And as I told you, Mocha is now a plugin in After Effects and no standalone version anymore. So just drag and drop it onto the footage. I go to full resolution and click on Mocha. So now it opens up Mocha in a Essentials workspace. You could always go back to the classic workspace that you're maybe used to, but let's just stick with the Essential one. So in here I go to the first frame, define an area, in this case I'm just using the rectangular spline tool and I want to stabilize my neck so I'm just roughly take that part. I don't need any skew for that, just translation, scale and rotation and I'm tracking forward. And while this is still tracking, why don't you just also take your time and write down a comment for me beneath the video. What was helpful for you in this tutorial and what would you like me to improve maybe for the next one? And also just feel free to give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you like it because then I can do more of those tutorials for you and I really love doing those. Okay, and the tracking is done. So let's quickly name our layer, call this one the neck track, save it and close it. And now in Mocha we can create the tracking data by clicking on create tracking data, select our layer and by default it is automatically selected but if you have more than just one layer you have to choose which one you want to use. Then click OK and now we don't want to track it but we want to invert the tracking so that it's stabilized. So we click on invert then we choose transform data because we only want to have the position and rotation changing because basically we only want to have the position of my neck staying in the same place and that's all I care about at the moment. So I'm just choosing transform and I'm going to export it to the green screen face layer and hit apply. And when we play this back now and you see that Mocha has done a pretty good job. So I can just have the mouse over that point here and you see it's pretty good locked. While we're at it let's pre-compose this and call this our step comp. Click OK and now in here we can mask out the head and I can make this really rough. Also I don't have to animate the mask because as I have this stabilized it should be pretty much within the mask all the time. Maybe give it a little bit more headroom here. So let's quickly key out the green before we start tracking the face of Jean-Claude Van Damme. So go to the key light effect, drag and drop it onto the footage and you want to click on this eyedropper here and now we want to choose a green color that is best for keying. And the best color of course is a color that is pretty close 
to the face because this is the green that we really want to get rid of. And then as a second tip, I would go for a green color that is close to the head where there are most details. And in this case, of course, pretty obviously it's the hair. So I would click somewhere around here. And when you hold down Alt and 4 at the same time, you see the alpha mat. You see we have a pretty good job for the hair, but not so much down here. So you can always just click on the green and make fine tweaks to it. You see, I just went a little darker with the green and now it looks pretty good and we could still fine tweak this later on but for me this is a really really nice key. Back in our original let's drag and drop in the face and roughly position it. Just hitting T for opacity so that I can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. I think something like this looks pretty good. So we'll deal with all the color issues later on but now comes the important part. Before we start the tracking it is always the most important thing when you do tracking with Mocha that the clip that you are tracking has the exact same dimensions in this case the green screen footage but you see the green screen footage I had to shrink it a lot it's now only around 40 percent so it's way smaller and not in the same position as our background clip and of course we can quickly change that by pre-composing it. So we go to layer, pre-compose, call it our face, hit OK. And now you see the face and the background, they both have the same dimensions and sit on the exact same spot. Perfect. Maybe a good point in time to save it and start tracking. Again, we bring out Mocha, drag it onto our clip. Again, we go to full resolution, click on Mocha. And now at first let's quickly skip through this and let's watch out for what we want to track. Most obviously would be of course the head because it's a head replacement tutorial but I'm going to stick the head onto his neck between his shoulders around this part. So why don't we just maybe track this part and maybe when you scrub through this you can see yeah that he's pretty frozen for the whole time. So we can also take this part and this part on the side here where we have a lot of detail. But I don't want to create new layers. I want to just add it to the first layer. So we can easily do that because all of the pen tools, the X-Pline tool, the rectangular tool and the ellipse tool, they all have the small plus sign. And that basically means that it adds to the layer. So if I choose that and maybe this area, you see it's still layer one. and just for the sake of it, let's use the ellipse tool and let's just take this part. Again, we don't really need this cue here. And let's track it forward and then later on also backwards. This is just possible because Mocha, as you may know, is a planar tracker. So everything you track needs to be on a same planar card, so to say. Just think about a 3D space where you just have planar cards sitting in there. So everything you want to track on one layer needs to be on a planar card. So you could not track over here together with his chest or let's say the side of the truck. But of course you could maybe track this part and also this small dirt part over there and then put something on this card. So this is something that you always have to keep in mind when choosing your layers. So, but let's just track backwards from here on. Perfect, the track is done. So let's quickly check how good the track is. And you can do that by clicking on the show planar surface and you get a blue square and I'm just roughly position it over his neck now. And I'm also going to click the checkbox for the planar grid and I can play this back and that looks pretty good to me now. Perfect. Before we save this, I go to the first frame because I know in After Effects I have aligned my face on the first frame. And here I can now click on the planar surface again and think about the middle point as the anchor point of the clip. To make it as simple as possible, I'm going to the first frame and click on expand the planar surface to fill the entire frame. And now when I zoom out a little bit, you can see that 
this surface is now also full frame and the middle cross will also be the same middle cross as for my face. So I'll just save it like that, close it and in Mocha I can go to the tracking data, create tracking data from the original, hit OK and now you see the points that it has created and also this middle point which now perfectly aligns with the anchor point of both of our clips. Nothing to worry about. So this is really the easiest workflow to deal with that kind of clips. Always make your planar surface full frame at the point in time where you have aligned your shots. And in this case, I have done that on the first frame. So in Mocha, I have set the planar surface to be full frame at the exact first frame. Really easy workflow. We take transform data and we want to apply it to the face hit apply export. I can quickly hit play on this and you see that we are tracking onto the head. And this is exactly what we wanted and this is tracking wise looking perfect, but of course the rest needs a little work. First things first, as you may see, I'm losing all the hair information that I have over here because I pre-composed the clip and it's cut off over here. But when I click into it, you see, I have of course filmed all the information, but as I have pre-composed all of this, the information is gone. But there's a button called Collapse Transformation and if I just enable it, After Effects will basically look for that missing information within the pre-comps. There we have it. It also shows you now the size of the pre-comp. So now let's work on a mask to cut out my head. For that, I'm going to create a mask of his shirt here and I'm so happy that it is blue because I can just use key light and key out the blue color. I've just soloed this so you can see it. Make a few tweaks then also expand it a little bit and then I'm going to feather it a lot and now nothing has really happened because at the moment we can just see through his shirt but we only want to see his shirt. So let's again bring out the original clip and now we use the key that we have created as a mat and this way everything that is alpha should be inverted. So an alpha invert. That's exactly what we are going for. And you see there's also a little bit of blue in his hair. So let's just mask that out. Go to subtract for the mask. Okay. And when I unsolo this, you see we have a nice mask here. And now let's play with the color of my face. Of course, I start with the levels effect. I'm just trying to get the brightness right, get rid of a little bit of the blacks. And now we can go into the colors and just fine tweak them a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit brighter and therefore now I'm just going for the brightness and contrast because why not? We make it a little brighter. So now I just went with the color wheels to add a little bit of this purple into the black tones and maybe just get rid of a little bit of the black by dragging the black slider in even more. And something like this looks fine to me. Another thing you could do is bring out a photo filter, which is normally just meant to make an image warmer or cooler. So if I just drag it out by default, it's, as you see, adding an orange tone. And now what you can do here is go to custom and for the color tone, just pick the original skin tone. And then you can just bring it up a little bit. But I think for now, this is really looking pretty good. Let's add on motion blur by simply clicking the motion blur button on the face. And let's watch this. And again, as I mentioned in the intro of this video, if you're planning on buying any Boris FX products, just use my discount code FLOWMOTION15 when you make your order and you will save 15% of your money. And so quickly as a recap, if you want to do something like this, you need of course a face that you put on top of the original face and that one needs to be as stable as possible and therefore you could just track the face or the part of the face where it should stick and stabilize it with the help of Mocha with just that one checker box that you have to activate, the invert checker box. Then you track the face of the original clip with a simple mask and then simply apply the transform data to the face. And again, just make sure that both of your layers have the exact same dimensions. And you can always do that by aligning the face, working on it, and once you're happy, just pre-compose it. And as a small tip, 
as I told you, do all of that on one frame. So if it's the first frame that is working for you, then pre-compose it at the first frame and also set the planar surface to fill out the whole screen on that frame. Could also be that it is the last frame, then do all of this on the last frame. But once you have your surface, full screen, both of your compositions set at the same point, then it's really just one click. But for now, I wish you a lot of fun with tracking faces in After Effects.